Hello and welcome back to the Making the Radio Cup blog. I'm Michelle and today we have part two of our interview with Kelsey Webb, the co-host of the WNCI Morning Zoo in Columbus, Ohio. What's the favorite part of your job? Uh, favorite part of my job is the surrealness, like the moments when you're meeting celebrities or you're going on trips for free or you're standing there and, you know, Enrique Iglesias is taking a picture with you or the Ting Tings put your name in their song. They have a version that they put all of us in there. They call me Kelsey. That's not my name. I mean, to think that the Ting Tings actually took a second and put my name in a song. I know they'll never know who the heck I am. But it's like you know you don't deserve that stuff, and you know you're really lucky to be in such a position and that you just by luck got there. I mean, I know that I put in a lot of hard work, but I'm sure a ton of other people could do my job. I've been blessed with it, and I want to keep that in mind, that I am so lucky. I'm going to use this platform. I'm going to be thankful for this platform, and I'm going to have fun, bottom line, every day. How about the most challenging part? Mm, Challenging part. I think what's been really difficult for me is uh, being in the spotlight and criticism, because when you make a mistake, it's in front of everybody, literally a ton, a ton of people. So when I make a mistake, it really bothers me. I think about it for the rest of the day. If I say something that's not relatable to other women and then they write an email to Jimmy, if I stick up for Angelina Jolie and everyone writes in an email, how can Kelsey support that home wrecker? I feel bad. I feel like, why do I like Angelina Jolie? <laughs> it feels silly. So the criticism was tough for me. And also it's interesting that our job is, is a small group of people working together every day. So our relationships and how we get along together are what the show is. Our, our show depends on it. So if any of us are, have a rift or we're arguing, it's really tough to fake it on the air. So when we do argue, it's, it's really a big thing. And I think that um, interpersonal skills have really had to grow throughout this whole thing because every day you're just in that room with five people. You've got to get along with them. You've got to learn how they operate and function and think so that the chemistry comes across on the air. What's the most ridiculous thing Dave and Jimmy have ever made you do? Definitely jumping out of a plane and skydiving, because I don't even like to fly. I literally pit out and sweat the entire time I'm on an airplane, and then I ended up jumping out of one from 10,000 feet. That was amazing. I, and, I, and, and again, another moment where I said to myself, why do I get to do this? This is so amazing. It, it's something I'll never forget. It's something that I never thought I was capable of. But because I'm on this show, I was pushed to that limit, and I followed through, and I was able to be proud of myself and experience something that a lot of people never get to experience. What goes into show prep for a morning show? Show prep, well, I do all the news, so I'm reading up on all the news. Uh, Gandhi gets all of Jimmy Celebrity Sleeves headlines together. Uh, our intern goes and gets coffee and Coke and ice. Um, Dave gets here about 5.30. He runs, starts running the board, and he gets all of his prep ready. Basically, we all have different segments that we work on, and our prep consists of going in and just researching that in the morning and getting ready. Because once the show starts, really, it's all fast forward. It's all forward momentum, and there's not a lot of time to pause and, and research anything. And what makes the Morning Zoo more unique from other morning shows? Well, since it's technically sort of my first radio job, um, I didn't understand that other radio shows can be really trite and corny and not so funny. Uh, I think that we're really honest, and I think we're really authentic and open about our lives, about our shortcomings, and about what we're good at. So I think that honesty and just being ourselves is super important, and people can hear that, and it translates to our relationships and us getting along and us even giving a hard time to each other. And as the show picks up more affiliates, what changes have you guys had to make in the way the show works? Well, it it actually was just the first couple of affiliates that really changed everything because all of a sudden we have a clock, we're looking at the clock, my news counts up to the clock. If I run over, then people in Kentucky are going to hear me say WNCI and think, what the heck is going on? So that that was a big thing. Once we added more, the only thing that changed was that Dave and Jimmy have to do a lot of promos for those other stations. So 
Uh, we ha- we try to send them stuff every day so that our presence is known on those stations. And a big part is traveling to other stations, although we don't do it that often. We go to K- Kentucky a couple times a year, go to Youngstown a couple times a year, and that is just so much fun to go to Kentucky and have someone know your name and know your voice in a city that you've only been to twice is awesome. And on top of that, when we started syndicating in Youngstown, all of my high school friends could hear and my mom could hear. And unfortunately, my grandma could hear too. I (laughs) hope she doesn't listen. I recommend that she doesn't, especially at 830 when I talk about sex. (laughs) And since you you grew up in Youngstown, what was your favorite station and or on-air jock growing up? Can I say that? All right. It was Hot 101. Um, But you got to believe me now that I go home, it's all Kiss FM, hey, 95.9. Now, when I was growing up, I'm not going to lie, I would turn to Hot 101 to hear the school closings and to hear AC and Kelly, and AC went to my pool, and so did Kelly, and so did their kids, and I thought that they were just the most famous people in the world. So to think that I kind of have the same position that they had in a community is crazy. Okay, this is kind of like the fun bonus question. Okay. You, you just won the lottery and your boss is on the phone. What's the first thing you say to him? My boss is on the phone. Um, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> um, I, well, we just got a new boss, Michelle, a brand new one. So I probably want to suck up to him. I'm a good brown noser. So I'd call him up and I'd say, Boss, we're going shopping. <laughs> Where do you want to go? I'll get you anything. Just make sure that you, uh, when that contract rolls around, you up me for a couple more years, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and one last question. What advice would you have for a college student breaking into radio for the first time? Uh, above all, internships. I, I, you've got to have an internship because connections make all of the difference. Networking makes all of the difference. If you can get your foot in a door and you can start in sales or some other department that you're not as interested in, you can totally see how the whole radio world works and then possibly move on, move over to a different department in the future. So, And being aggressive, obviously, and having something unique to offer. What do you have that other people don't have. Um, for me, I think it it's my openness and candidness. I really don't have anything to hide. I'll tell you anything. And I think that that helps people to relate to me. So uh, what's unique about you? Bring it to the table and really showcase it and expand on that. And that's it.